Hey guys, as I film this, it's currently Sunday, August 30th, 2020. WWE Payback just wrapped up, and this is the second pay-per-view in a week that WWE has done. We had SummerSlam last week, followed that up with another pay-per-view this week. So let's hop right into it. WWE Payback first match on the show was on the kickoff show. The Riot Squad taking on the Iconics. Iconic the Iconics had a promo before, as they were making their way to the ring before their match. was saying that the Riot Squad was not really a team, and the commentary team played into this. And this is pretty much the story of the whole match. Uh, squad was showing apprehension, tagging in and out. There was like some um, in a, inadvertent hits to one another. Um, I kind of tried to convince Ruby Riot when she was knocked off the apron that it was actually, um, or trying to convince Morgan that it was actually Ruby Riot who had knocked her off the apron instead of uh, Peyton Royce. Uh, Morgan basically has a mental breakdown at ringside, doesn't know if she should tag in or not. Um, and then there's a botch second rope punch from Morgan after she eventually does tag in. Ending was kind of frantic and fast paced, but eventually ends with Riot and Morgan hitting a double team. This allows um, Ruby Riot to pin Billy Kay for the win over the Iconics. And then after the match, they announced to the kickoff show panel who was at ringside that they are officially back together. The Riot Squad is now a single unit. They are entering the women's tag team division. Well, this is good for the women's tag team division. Gets another team in there to challenge for the belts. The match itself was kind of meh, kind of sloppy, and if you missed it, you didn't miss much. After that, we have Bobby Lashley taking on Apollo Crews for the United States Championship to kick off the official payback card. Um, MVP and Shelton Benjamin, of course, uh, Lashley's fellow Hurt Business comrades, they accompanied him to the ring, and they're sitting at ringside in suits, feeling pretty confident that they want to get involved in the match. Uh, Crews hits a moonsault to Lashley from the apron early on in the match. It's pretty impressive. And then Lashley drives Crews into the post off a of fireman's carry. Uh, Lashley would hit a dominator, but Cruz would kick out, and then Cruz would hit an enziguri and follow that up with a crossbody. Pretty impressive spot there. Then you connect with a nice little combo here: a spine buster followed immediately by a standing moonsault, and then Cruz would carry the full Nelson into a series of German frog splashes and a or into a series of German suplexes followed by a frog splash. Uh, but uh, Bobby Lashley would kick out of that as well. And then Lashley would cruise with a massive choke slam. I mean, the high Cruz got on this choke slam was incredible. Uh, Lashley gets him with this big time choke slam and forces him to tap out to the full Nelson. So Bobby Lashley is United States champion. The Hurt Business has gold once again. And after the match, nice little uh, tribute to Black Panther, uh, Chadwick Boseman, who uh, tragically passed away this past weekend after a bout with colon cancer. Uh, they did the Wakanda Forever uh, motion. But then after that, uh, Apollo Crews attacked Lashley, saying that he'll get that belt back. So it looks like this feud between Crews and the Hurt Business is still not over, even after it's been going on for seemingly months. Um, after that, we had a backstage segment with Paul, Paul Heyman. Um, he basically insults Caleb Braxton for interviewing him and indicates that Roman Reigns um, will or will not sign the contract, depending on how Roman Reigns is feeling about that. And that contract, of course, is for the main event, the Universal Triple Threat Championship match. Um, after that, we have another segment where JBL tells Keith Lee not to feel bad if he loses to Randy Orton. Kind of interesting here. Seemingly came out of left field. After that, we have Sheamus versus Big E. And then uh, Big E came to the ring rocking some very nice All That boots. Of course, All That's a classic like kid version of Saturday Night Live that was aired back on Nickelodeon when I was a kid in the 90s. So I got to kick out seeing those. And after that, it was a pretty heavy hitting match. A heavy hitting match. Some powerful blows by these two guys. Uh, Big E would whiff on an apron splash, slam the apron really hard after Sheamus moved, and then Sheamus would stomp the knee of Big E and work on that left knee continuously throughout the match. Big E would later spear Sheamus uh, through the ropes to the outside of the ring, and Sheamus would knee Big E in the face with a very loud smack. Sounded very painful. After that, Big E would counter a bro kick, though, into a powerbomb and hit the big ending for the win. So looks like WWE is continuing with a singles push for Big E for now. Wow. Woods still out nursing that injury and looks like Kofi's taking time off. I'm fine with that. Big E's very charismatic on the mic. He can go in the ring. He's pretty much the total package. And that interview we had on Talking Smack really makes you want to see this guy succeed as a single star. So Big E gets a big win over Sheamus here tonight. And I would not be surprised to see this feud continue just to to uh, continue to build up Big E singles or star stock. After that, we had a backstage interview with Matt Riddle and a segment with Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. This was just mainly hammering home that these two do not like each other, even though they're being forced to team up together for the uh, Women's Tag Team Championship. After that, we had Baron Corbin versus Matt Riddle. Uh, Corbin was carried to the ring on a throne, still living to, up to that King Corbin gimmick. 
And then when Matt Riddle came to the ring, you know how he kicks off his flip-flops in the ring. As soon as he did that, Corbin hit him with a clothesline and the match was on. Uh, Corbin would punch Riddle after laying him out across the announce table and then Riddle would lock Corbin into a sleeper. And then Corbin put Riddle into this weird like chicken wing chokehold sleeper. I'm not sure what it was called. Uh, Corbin would dominate this match early, but Riddle would uh, manage a comeback after kicking Corbin, who would uh, slide out of the ring. Um, he would have hit a running knee and some open palm strikes, but then Corbin would hit a deep six, but Riddle would kick out. Uh, Riddle would hit a GTS and a floating bro for the win, and it should be noted that even though Riddle hit the go to sleep GTS, Michael Cole referred to it as the bro to sleep. Haha, uh -huh, very, very funny. Uh, so yeah, so Matt Riddle gets the win here, and then after the match, Baron Corbin attacks Matt Riddle backstage, so this feud is not over yet. The match itself was okay. It was good to see Matt Riddle get a big win over over Baron Corbin on pay-per-view. Um, when I say big win, I mean it's not like Corbin's the biggest star on the roster, but he has been on the roster for a while, so seeing Matt Riddle get a pay-per-view win over guys who been on the main roster for quite some time is very impressive and should help him going further. After that, we had the Boston Hug Connection defending their Women's Tag Team Championships against the makeshift team of Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Uh, Baszler uh, pretty much dominated Shaw. Bailey and Sasha Banks early on, and then Banks and Bailey would later cause a collision between Baszler and Jax, and Jax is knocked off the apron. This allows the champs to hit, uh, to gain control as Banks would hit a dos amigos, not, th not three amigos. Uh, she would hit two amigos, suplexes, and tribute Eddie Guerrero onto Baszler. Uh, Jax would wrecking ball slam Banks later in the match into the barricade a couple of times. Jax uses Banks as a weapon against Bailey, and then would drop Banks with the Samoan drop. Uh, Baszler hits running knees on Banks and Bailey and hits gut wrench power bombs on both of them. Very impressive here. Banks counters Jack's power bomb into an X Factor. That was a very cool counter to that. I'd never seen that before. And the height Banks was in the air on that power bomb was incredible. And just like it was like one fluid motion where Jack lifted her up and then Banks countered into the X Factor, slammed her face into the ground. Very cool spot. Uh, Banks would take frog splash with Jacks onto Jax and Bailey would hit uh Baszler with a Bailey to belly, try saying that five times fast. Uh, Jax would later kick out of that frog splash though. Uh, Baszler would hit a blind tag on Jax and would trap uh, Banks in the Muda lock and put Bailey in the uh, core field clutch at the same time. Very impressive spot here. And she's got both these uh, both these women in a submission hold. Bailey taps, so they lose the tag team titles. So now Jax and Baszler are your new women's tag team champions. In a matter of a week, Sasha Banks goes from, goes from Sasha two belts to Sasha no belts, and Bailey now has one belt as well. So they're definitely building the tension between the Boston Hut connection. Then after the match, there was an interview where Nia Jax is going crazy in the ring, like celebrating, and Shayna Baszler is playing like the uh, calm role in this tag team. So uh, interesting to see where this tag team will go and how long they can go before imploding, or if they're going to go the, the route the bar and actually become a powerful unit together. But Shayna Baszler was the star of this match. Very impressive throughout the entire thing. And I think it's only a matter of time before she wins a, a singles women's championship belt on her time in the main roster. After that, we had Keith Lee making his pay-per-view debut, taking on the Legend Killer, the Apex Predator, the Viper, whatever you want to call him, Randy Orton. Uh, Lee would plow through Orton with a big crossbody, and then Orton would be talking trash to uh, Keith Lee and would chop him hard on the chest. These chops were like gunshots, they were so loud. These big knife edge chops. Um, Orton would drop Lee on the announce table with a big backdrop. Uh, but Lee would launch Orton out of the ring with a big shoulder block and then drop Orton on the now stable with his own backdrop. Um, Orton would hit a DDT onto Lee, his patented DDT, but that was not enough to keep him down. Orton goes for an RKO. Lee counters that into a spirit bomb for the win. Big time win here for Keith Lee. It looks like they're strapping the rocket to his back and sending him in the orbit. He beats Randy Orton in his pay-per-view debut, and you could not ask for a bigger win, maybe other than like John Cena. Uh, for Keith Lee than beating Randy Orton in his uh, main roster pay-per-view debut and not his main, not his big pay-per-view debut, but his main roster pay-per-view debut because he did beat on Survivor Series with when he was still at NXT. But yeah, so that's a big win for Keith Lee. WWE clearly sees the stock in him and they got him a big win over Randy Orton on pay-per-view. That's huge. Now just give him back his old NXT music and we'll be good to go with Keith Lee. After that, we had another segment with Paul Heyman that was pretty much identical to the first one. He basically installs Kevin Braxton again and hints that will Roman sign the contract? Yes or no? Remains to be seen. After that, we had the Mysterios versus Buddy Murphy and Seth Rollins. And to me, this was the match of the night. Fantastic action from all four of these guys, Dominic, Ray, Murphy, and Rollins. Uh, so Dominic was an early flurry of offense and then he had a springboard, uh, springboard arm drag. Uh, Rollins would slide Mysterio out of the ring onto Murphy's knee. Very cool double team move there. 
Dom would go for a crossbody, but Rollins and Murphy would catch him, and then Rollins would counter that catch into like a Falcon's arrow. Very nice uh, sequence there. Mysterio hits a moonsault on Rollins, and then Rollins looks like he was staying up for a buckle bomb, but Mysterio rolled through and kicked Rollins in the head. Uh, there was a tilter world DDT by Dominic to Murphy, and Rollins follows that up with a swing blade like immediately onto Dominic. Uh, Murphy and Rollins would slam Dominic into the barricade, and then Rollins during the match, uh, he's like stepped up his game here with this Monday Night Messiah gimmick. He's asking Ray, where's Angie? Where's Angie? Now, that's of course Ray Mysterio's wife. Uh, Rollins tells Murphy to kick Ray Mysterio in the head. Mysterio counters that, and R Murphy ends up kicking Rollins in the head. Rollins is like out of the match. Uh, he's falls to the outside of the ring. Uh, Dominic would tag in, and he, uh, uh, he has Mysterio he slides Mysterio out of the ring, who goes into Seth Rollins, and then that turns into a sunset flip bomb into the barricade. Nice exchange there. Dominic would then hit 619 onto Murphy and follow that up with a big, uh, five star, or a big frog splash for the win. The Mysterios finally get some retribution over the Monday Night Messiah, Seth Rollins, and his follower. Buddy Murphy, and he gets their plan to see some tension between Murphy and Rollins. Rollins would just stare a hole through Murphy as he's walking up the ramp and left the ring without Murphy. But it's a nice win for Mysterio and Dominic. Looks like this feud between the Mysterios and Rollins and Murphy might be so. They might have another rematch tomorrow night, but I would definitely think the Mysterios would win that match, and then that would set up the feud between Rollins and Murphy going forward. After that, we had the main event. Braun Strowman versus Roman Reigns versus The Fiend for the Universal Championship. Big story here is there's actually a couple stories. Like, this is when WWE storytelling is at its best. When you got multiple stories combining into one and it makes sense. So, we have The Fiend and Strowman, they had their issues over the Universal Championship. You throw on Alexa Bliss into the mix. It was becoming like seemingly more and more infatuated with The Fiend, becoming a, a possible follower of The Fiend. And then at the end of SummerSlam, we had the return of Roman Reigns, who speared Strowman, speared the Fiend, and now he is now a Paul Heyman guy. Looks like this this heel turn of Roman Reigns is in full force. It's just a shame there is no live crowd there to react to it. But hey, I'm a fan of Reigns being with Paul Heyman, and I'm, I'm I was definitely calling for him to be a heel a long time ago when he was still getting being booed as a face. Um, so let's see what this uh, heel badass version of Roman Reigns can do with an advocate and Paul Heyman. So the match starts, uh, we got this, the, uh, the Fiend making his entrance, and it should be noted that he does not have that atrocious belt of his face anymore. He, he actually was allowed to walk out with the Universal Championship belt, the actual title belt. So that was a plus right there, out the gate. So he makes his way to the ring, it's still dark in the arena, he gets attacked by Braun Strowman, and the bell rings, and the match begins. Roman Reigns is nowhere to be seen though, so it's just mainly like a one-on-one, -on -one, no holds barred match between Fon uh, Strowman and the Fiend. Uh, Fiend would hit his sister Abigail, on Strowman early, but Strowman would kick out, and then Fiend would slam Strowman through the announce table. Meanwhile, we cut to the back. We have Alexa Bliss watching the match on monitor. She's got her uh, probably putting pigtails and some dreads, kind of like to mirror the Fiend's dreads. Um, after that, we get the Fiend. He gets his big mallet out from under the ring. It looks like he's gonna hit Strowman with it, but Strowman would throw a desk chair at him. Uh, Fiend would later hit Strowman with that mallet though, and then he would hit hit Strowman with a couple of steel stairs. Uh, Strowman would charge through Fiend, and they make their way up to the the main entrance, and Strowman would charge through Fiend. They go off the stage, through this table below, very cool spot, and then they would somehow make their way back to the ring. Uh, Fiend and Strowman are on the turnbuckle, Fiend superplexes Strowman, and the ring explodes, it collapses, and the ref takes one of the funniest bumps I've ever seen. <laughs> he falls out of the ring, he like looks like he was trying to go over the top rope, but it was like a delayed response, so you just kind of see him upside down for a little bit, and his feet just go like... Right out of the ring. Very funny spot. I legit laughed out loud at that referee bump spot. So the ring explodes, and then who comes out? Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman with a chair. So he signs a contract at the top of the stage, comes to the ring with a chair. He immediately tries to pin the Fiend, does not work. Tries to pin Strowman, does not work. Uh, so he ends up uh, slamming this chair onto Strowman, and then he's going to do the same thing to the Fiend, but the Fiend puts a mandible claw on him. Reigns counters that with a low blow. The Fiend falls out of the ring. Reigns Spear Strowman, he pins him for the win and is now your Universal Champion. So, this Paul Heyman Roman Reigns alliance is in full force. The, heel, the Roman Reigns heel turn appears to be in full force. 
and the, the uh, feud between Strowman and The Fiend, they could continue that if they want, or they could put Fiend in the one-on-one -on -one program with Robert Range if they want, or they could do something with Alexa Bliss. Um, there's like a ton of possibilities, and this is why WWE storytelling, when it's on fire, is fun to watch, and this is a perfect example, because you don't know what's going to happen. You're just predictable, but in this case, there's so many factors and variables in the storyline that you don't know what's going to happen because of all the different directions they could take in. I just hope they don't screw it up. But yeah, so Roman Reigns ends the night as you are Universal Champion. The newest Paul Heyman guy is the new Universal Champ. And that's all I got for you. If you liked this video, feel free to get a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, check out my website, cityfanzone.blogspot.com, and give me a follow on Twitter, on Instagram. Links to both of those are in the description below, and those handles are at cityfanzone. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.